Welcome to the Clarinet YouTube channel. If you're new around here, head to clarinet.com. You can check out a free podcast. There's over 130 episodes now. And this is a great resource if you're a teacher, if you're a student, if you're someone with some time off right now and you're looking to be practicing the clarinet more, you can check out a lot of different interviews with a lot of different people. Now today, sorry, I'm just gonna adjust this here a little bit. Today I got a request to do some live sort of teaching content because I know there's a lot of people, students, teachers all over the place who are not in classes right now. And the thing I wanted to focus on today and provide sort of a free resource here was major scales. Now the reason this is important is a lot of times I will go to schools and I'll find the students are struggling through a piece. And there's no real reason for them to be struggling through the piece because at the level they're playing, they should really already know the scale that the piece is in. And if you've practiced the scale that the piece is in, it's kind of like knowing the building blocks that make it up. And, and you can sight read a lot of pieces in that key if you know how to play the key and some various patterns in that key really well. So I think it's totally valuable for um, when you're home right now and you're off school, you don't have any band music to practice, you can actually practice all the band music that's coming in the future by practicing your scales because odds are pretty high they're going to be made up of those scales. So in this session I just want to introduce you to the concept of major scales, some basic major scales you can play on your clarinet, and a little teaching resource that I've put together here that you can use with your students or yourself if you're interested in, in taking this time to really get to know your scales. Um, first of all, so what is a scale? A scale is basically just a pattern of notes that has a certain sound. So in this lesson that's pretty much all we're going to focus on. I mean, that is kind of the basics anyways. Um, so we, we could pull out a piano and show you the different intervals that make up each scale and go into the science of it, but really, for now, a major scale is a scale that sounds major, and that's all you need to know. Um, I think it's good to recognize the sound of it, because then you can hear if you're right or wrong. And that's a big thing too when you're playing scales, is that if you just blast through them, and then you have to look at the teacher and say, well, was it right? You really aren't learning anything. You should be able to hear in your head the sound that you want. So before we get started, this is how a major scale sounds. I'm just going to play it. I want you to listen and see if you can identify some main features, right? <laughs> So you'll notice it sounds a very certain way. If I was to play one wrong note in there and you have a good ear, or several wrong notes, wrong. Those are obviously not the right notes, right? To your ear, right away it sounds wrong. Even if you just started learning music, this is gonna sound wrong. So basically we're just going for that pattern that sounds that way, okay? Now, this is pretty intimidating for beginners. I put together a little chart here, which is something that I've used in the past with students to help them learn. It's basically the circle of fifths, but it's stretched out top to bottom in kind of like a checklist so that you can practice with a little bit more ease. Now I'm gonna put a link to this down in the show notes, or not the show notes, the, the uh, what do they call it on YouTube, the description. I'll put a link in the description to download this file. But basically what it is is a little checklist to learn your scales. And what I've done is I'm kind of making it like skiing. So for skiing, you have the green runs. Those are the easy runs you can go on as a beginner. Then you have the blue runs. Those are the intermediate ones that you can go on when you're a little more advanced. Then there's the black ones or the double black ones. Those ones you shouldn't even attempt unless you're quite advanced. And I think that that's kind of like your scales. There's a bunch of scales to learn. It can seem intimidating at first. So don't let it be intimidating. Focus on the ones that are going to matter for the level that you're at and that you can actually play at your level. Now I know some people disagree. They start students with like six sharps just because they think it's, well, might as well get it under your hands now. But I kind of disagree with that because I think that you should be building a confidence in what you're doing and learning keys that are applicable to the music that you're going to be playing. And also you don't want to develop any bad habits. If you start grabbing at all the pinky keys and doing crazy stuff from day one, you're going to have a serious problem down the road when your hands look like this and you can't play quickly at all. Okay. So first things first, there's a couple ways you can interpret this chart. Um, basically I've got all the scales here. The key signature is written here, and then if you zoom in real close, you'll see I've got some stuff to do with it. So the first thing is just the scale, obviously, then the arpeggio, which we'll talk about probably next time, and the dominant seven, which we'll probably do a few times from now if I, uh, if I get more requests to keep going. But so today, I just want to focus on the scale and these first green boxes here. So what does that say? If you zoom in real close, it says Shalimo, Clarion, and Altissimo. 
So basically that is the three ranges of the clarinet, the three basic ranges. The shallow is everything below the so-called break. The clarion is the break until high C. And then altissimo is anything beyond that. Now there's a couple ways you can interpret this as well based on your level. Um, if you're a very beginner, I would actually advise just learning pentascales, which means five notes. So in the first scale, you're just going to learn the first five notes of that scale and do that for all of them. And that's going to prevent you from going over the break, the so-called break, if, you, if you're not comfortable yet, right? And then you can extend that and add more as you're ready. But I would personally not go on to the other blue boxes until you're, you're really comfortable with, um, with playing over the break in these beginning scales anyways, especially C major is the one that's going to really matter. So how do we find the notes in a scale to learn from this chart? You'll notice this chart is based on memorization. Um, you can also practice reading your scales, but in my experience, it's good to do both. I mean, you want to practice reading them from the paper, but a lot of band students and teachers, they only focus on reading from the paper, and the student actually doesn't know how to play the scale. So in my opinion, you don't know how to play the scale unless you can sit down and if someone says, play me F major, you can just play it, okay? That is how you truly know the scale because it's in your muscle memory, it's in your brain, it's about that key signature over here. So. We're getting a little off track. Let's start with this sheet today. Um, again, I'm going to put a link to this to download below. Um, but we're going to start actually, you can see there it says C major. That one is typically what bands start with because it's the easiest for the whole band to use. But I'm actually going to start today with F major and there's a reason for that. By the way, these are written keys for clarinet. These are not concert pitch. That's maybe a topic for another video. But when I say F, I mean you're literally going to play your note F, okay? So, F scale, how do you build a scale? Well, basically, this is pretty surprising for a lot of students, but all the scales follow a basic pattern um, of semitones and, and tones, which I'm not gonna go into exactly right here, but basically for a scale like F, it's the easiest to do on clarinet, and you need to just go from one letter name to the next, all the way up the alphabet, okay? So any scale, whether it's C or F or whatever, you start on one letter, you end up on that letter again, and you just go through your alphabet to get there. So in the case of um, F, disregarding key signature, it's just gonna be the letter F, G, A, et cetera, all the way up to the next F, and that's how you can build your scale. Now, you do need to know one more thing here. There's one flat in this scale, which is going to be your first finger B flat, right? And again, if, this, if you're just beginning, don't worry about the why that this is, just worry about that this is, okay? It's kind of like if you're learning to color, it's not important to know what exact pigments make up the red crayon. It's just important that you can tell the red crayon from the blue crayon. And if you can't do that, there's a little bit of a problem, right? So for now, it's just really important, even if you're not gonna get into the theory, even if you're never gonna get into the theory of behind all this stuff, you just need to memorize that F major has one flat and the flat is B, okay? Um, so basically to build this scale, I think it's the easiest one on the clarinet. That's why I always start with it. Um, it's all fingers down with that far pinky key that closes one pad, right? That is the low F and we're just going to lift fingers one by one. So I'm going to say these note names out loud. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and then it's the back thumb F, right? And then you just go back down that exact same way. So you just want to feel that in your fingers before you start. Um, again, don't worry too much about the key signature, but you just need to realize that you're just lifting your fingers one at a time. And that's how it's going to look. That's how it's going to feel. It's really important, I think, to practice your finger pattern first before you get the air and the tongue and whatever else involved, because this is just going to, there's multiple steps, right? I mean, I've heard before of this triangle theory of clarinet. There's, there's basically three people playing. I think I got it from, uh, Oh my God, his name escapes me right now, but he's done the, the air, revela air revelation device. Anyway, so one corner is basically the air of this triangle. One corner is the tonguing and one corner is the fingers. And these three people work together to make the sound of the clarinet. So first things first, work on your fingers up and down. I'm assuming you've already got an airstream to be ready to do this and that you've warmed up. And we're not gonna do tonguing yet, just gonna be blowing air, okay? so. We're just going to take that pattern that I just did of lifting the fingers up and putting them down and just blow through that scale and see how it sounds. Okay, so if you want to practice along, I guess I'll count us in here and we'll try and go together, okay? One, two, three. <sighs> ways you could 
practice that, you could go a bit faster, you could go backwards, different, different patterns you want to get in your fingers. But the thing about this chart is, um, and I had a highlighter here somewhere, there it is. This really helps you focus on where you're at with your learning because I just played F major, it was right, it sounded good, it sounded like a major scale. So what I would do is I would go over to my Shalomo register on the chart and just color that in. And then tomorrow when you come back to your practicing, you know exactly where you are with your music and you're not going to be ever um, kind of struggling for what's to practice next, right? So, all right, there's F major. Let's do G major, okay? So a tip for doing this when you're doing any scale also is, is keep your hand in kind of that C shape for clarinet, if you can think about that. Um, you want to have those round curved hands. A lot of students, a lot of people playing tend to do this. Okay, now this can happen, let's say that you play guitar or um, piano or some other instrument where you're much more kind of strong with the fingers. Guitar, you really have to push. And if you don't push, especially on some of those, those barred chords and, and fretted notes, you're not gonna get a sound, right? So people will learn on guitar, they'll, maybe they'll learn violin or whatever, and then they'll come to clarinet and they think they gotta push, right? You don't have to push on the clarinet, really. Um, the way that I like to think about it actually is that the clarinet is kind of like um, uh, a building, right? So if you go into a building and there's paintings on the wall, if you take off those paintings, the building shouldn't fall down, right? So think about your, your fingers as being little paintings on the walls of a building and the support beam is your thumb and your teeth. So obviously if you pull the support beam out of the building, the building will fall down. But if you're just taking paintings off the wall and putting them back, that's all there is to it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna knock the building over, and no sensible person would, would think otherwise, right? So, um, just for teachers, anyone watching, this is another kind of area that I sort of had trouble with. Is that a lot of um, people seem to think that it's good to start with this this E, for example, and get people used to grabbing the clarinet. But I mean, if you can't play an open G and be totally steady and comfortable, and even marching around a field with just an open G, nothing else, it's not. If it's not steady it's not ready, <laughs> okay? So um, you never wanna be grabbing or supporting the clarinet um, too much with the fingers. I mean, obviously it helps a little bit to have nine fingers pressed down than zero, but I mean, it, it, not really, right? It's not like that, so. Anyways, let's talk about G. So basically G is just another scale, starting on a note, and we're gonna go through the alphabet and get to the next. Hey there, sorry everyone, the stream cut off. YouTube is having some issues today, I guess. Anyways, we're on G major. Um, again, don't worry about why the key signatures are, just try and do them for now, that's enough. So we got G, A, middle finger B, I'm exaggerating, don't lift your fingers this high. Um, C, D, E, F sharp on the front, and then G, okay? So this is a scale that has one sharp, all right? Um, really big thing is to listen. So many students play F major, and then they go to G major, and what happens is, sorry, just one sec here. What happens is they play it like this. They, they're like, oh, okay, I've got, I've got one sharp now, so what I'm gonna do is just basically play the notes I just did and then add a sharp too. So their scale sounds like this. Now that's a perfectly nice sounding scale. Um, it actually is a scale which you'll learn later, but it's not a major scale. Remember that I was talking about really being careful to listen with your ears we don't do enough of this in, in band class, especially. We do too much on the paper. So if you're, if you're playing a scale and you have to ask that it's, or if it's right or wrong, um, it's already wrong because you didn't hear it, right? So even if it was right, it might be wrong. How do you even know if it was right, right? So listen, this is how a major scale should sound again. Get it in your ear. <laughs> Hear that beginning was quite a bit different, right? So if you hear that kind of dark sound at the beginning, instead of, you'll know that it's not right, okay? So G major, middle finger B, first finger F sharp, okay? You can play it with me if you want. One, two, three. Okay, so 
we can check off the other one. Assuming you've memorized this and you've played it multiple times correct, <laughs> right? Um, you can check this one off. So notice we did one sharp, one flat today. And quite honestly, if you've accomplished that, if you filled in one or two of these boxes in a day, you're probably done for the day. Um, there's a lot of days in your life and if you add too many boxes at once, you're gonna get confused. So I think we'll actually stop here for today and maybe tomorrow I'll come back and we'll do the next two boxes. Um, and maybe we'll do two boxes a day for quite a while if you wanna keep tuning in. I'll, I'll keep making these live broadcasts. But in the meantime, I do invite you to grab a highlighter, download this sheet, and start coloring in your scales. Uh, maybe start with all the ones that you already know even and test yourself. See which ones you can play from memory. How many boxes can you fill, on, fill in before you've even started here if you're an advanced player? Maybe you can fill in them all, right? But this will also expose, by the way, which scales you pretend you know or you kind of think that you know, but you don't really do them that well, right? Um, to take this to an advanced level too, you might want to grab a pencil or a pen and up in the corner, I almost should have done this. Maybe I'll do it before I print it off again. But let's say that you do them all at like quarter note equals 40 or then quarter note equals 80 or 60 or 120 or whatever you want, right? But you can track not only your, your um, uh, whether you know the scales, but you can also track how fast they go. So maybe you want to do a whole sheet for 40 beats a minute. Reprint it off. Do a whole sheet for 60. Do a whole sheet for 80. Um, and then you'll really be a lot more comfortable, okay? So try this out. If you're a beginner student, uh, like I said, scales are gonna be really intimidating, um, but it doesn't have to be that way. Remember, we're just learning building blocks to play music with, right? It's kind of like um, building a house or something. You just take all the bricks and put them down in the right order and you build a house. That's exactly what making scales and, and music is really like, okay? So don't be overwhelmed by this. It literally is just a few notes in certain patterns that you just gotta get under your fingers. And um, if you can get these first four scales down, first five even, um, you're really ready to go from grade seven to grade nine, or if you're a beginner, the first couple of years of, of beginner band, you know, most music is going to be written in these keys for a long time. So this is really a great beginning point, And um, I really hope this was a big help. So if you're a band teacher watching this, uh, please do pass it on to your students. You can subscribe for the podcast at clarineat.com. And um, if you found this was really valuable, I would definitely appreciate if you can... <laughs> no editing on YouTube Live. Um, but if you found this was really valuable and you want more things, uh, comment below and I could do some additional lessons. Um, and also, it would be great if you would consider supporting the podcast at clarinet.com slash subscribe. You get access to ad-free extended bonus content. And um, also, if you just want to leave me a tip, I'll leave a link for that too. I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors before I stop. Um, Clarinet, the channel here, and the podcast is brought to you by Encoda. It's an app that's kind of like Spotify, but for sheet music, you can check it out at encoda.com, N-K-O-D-A.com. Maybe you're someone who's kind of getting into digital music right now, and this would be a great time to kind of try something like that. Um, and I also assume that many people are going to be using their, their iPad and not the old-fashioned tree music like I always do here. So <laughs> maybe, that's, uh, maybe this should have been a time that I really get into digital music as well right now. But um, we've also got Legere Reads. Legere is a Canadian synthetic read company. You can check them out at legere.com. That's L-E-G-E-R-E.com. And these are excellent because well, I love them for teaching because you can just stand here and talk for 10 minutes, come back, and your read is still perfectly good to go. So check those out. And uh, last but not least, Bakun Musical Services is sponsoring the podcast. And if you are watching this and you're a Clarinet listener, you actually get access to an exclusive coupon for 10% off your next accessory purchase. So just enter code Clarinet at checkout at bakunmusical.com and that is valid on the Canadian store and the, um, the US global store. And that's not just for mouthpieces, it's for all accessories. So barrels, bells, cases, uh, care kits, all kinds of stuff you can, you can use with that. Um, so one last thing, if you are watching this and you are inside, staying safe, doing the best you can, um, that is the best we can do right now. So I would really encourage you to keep doing that until we're told otherwise, because man, I just, this whole situation really freaks me out and um, I don't want to panic or anything, but I think that it'd be great if we, if everyone just takes this seriously. Um, I'm not a doctor, so this isn't medical advice, but let's just all kind of do what we can online. And ironically, I think that this is really connecting people lately in a great new way. A lot of people are really seeing the value and reaching out and, and there's this whole social distancing going on, but 
But uh, aside from that, everyone's really being being great to one another. I, I've seen Michael Lonestern, for example, doing some great duet videos. A lot of people are doing some kind of like hangout stuff. And uh, so I'm going to try and keep tuning in once a day just to do a half hour lesson like this or however long this was. And uh, so come back tomorrow for the additional couple scales that are on this sheet. So thanks so much for watching. If you got any questions, post them below and I will see you next time.